nice to meet all of you. Hope it's fantastic. I do love this venue, I must admit. I'm quite inspired coming here. It just shows you, it, you know, it's not about how much money you spend, it's what you do with it, isn't it? Uh, in Leicester, I run something called Citizen's Eye, and it's run entirely by volunteers. And I've been running it for four years, and our website, which you can see here, behind this cup of coffee, is um, a WordPress blog. So it's not a website, which means it's free, straight away. It's powered by lots of free stuff. So all of our films go on YouTube, which is free. All of our photos go on Flickr, which is free. Um, and we use Twitter and Facebook, again, which is free. And the, the idea really is, the lowest common denominator is it has to be free and it has to be fully accessible to people. So if you use your library card in Leicester or Leicestershire, our county, there's a Citizen's Eye logo on the homepage as you click in because the value is seen there that, of, of being able to get to people. I was just talking to Sarah about uh, the fantastic Glen Ken's Gazette there about an on, uh, having an online presence and it's not about a website, it should be about a blog and lots of people helping you to do that and I'm sure that's one of the things that will come out today. But also, if you want to use things like Facebook and Twitter, um, it's not about cutting and pasting things on each of those. You should put it on once, and then they should be linked. And I know it's Joe you put on your thing there. You do the Facebook for the cat strand, link to Twitter. Yay! <laughs> so don't do it twice. Do it once, and then kind of let it all cascade out. And I think you should be doing online exactly what you do face to face. Um, and what we realised was that we were doing lots and lots of things online with Citizens Eye. And after four years, we've now got our own sort of TV station, we've got our own radio station, we're about to launch a newspaper in Leicester. But that doesn't necessarily mean that for a TV station you have to have an area or a big building. It's just about getting people to contribute things that you can put onto a YouTube channel that people can watch one after the other. You know, so what we're trying to do is reclaim a lot of things that people think, well, you could, if we want a radio station, for example, we've got to have a studio booth and we've got to have a big area and all that stuff. It's not about that anymore. It's about using this free stuff like iPadio, which you can just use on a website. Or if you've got smartphone technology, you can download the app and um, just interview someone, load it up. Again, it goes onto our WordPress blog. It links to Facebook and Twitter. People can then listen to guest talk, someone introducing the film you might have had here, someone you know, recording the sort of, you know, parish council meeting or, or anything like that, your planning meeting for the town hall. Anything like that. So it's all about whichever way people can choose to engage, they don't necessarily have to come out of the house. I think from my point of view, the most important thing is you've got to give people an opportunity to come together. <coughs> and it's really difficult because, you know, this room could be full of 50 people, you know, or it could have one person. And what you have to be is working with the amount of people that you've got. And what we decided to do, we were talking to so many people that were telling us they were going to get involved and then not turning up and some of them were, some of them weren't, that we thought well, actually if we had one opportunity a week where we could get people just to kind of come together and have a community conversation, we should try it. So we went to a coffee shop, you've already got one next door, which is fantastic, great coffee, um, and we said to them, when's your quietest time? And they said, a Tuesday morning, 9.30 to 10.30. So I said, right, all I want from you, I don't want any free tea or coffee, I just want the ability to put up a banner or stick something on the wall for one hour. And after two years, we still run that now, but what happens is, at 10.30, much to everyone's surprise, I go around and I take the banner down and I move everything like that, and then I leave. If people decide to stay, that's great for the coffee shop and great for them, but they know if they turn up between 9.30 and 10.30, there's a one hour community news cafe. And that has worked really, really well for us. Now in November last year, uh, when we ran one of our community media weeks, we run one every June, every November um, and we did it really as a way of our, getting ourselves more out into the county by talking to people like yourself for example who are running little magazines or running online blogs or like community radio stations to just contribute content during that week that we could kind of amplify out a little bit more together um, and in November last year this chap who's coming up tomorrow to support us from the Media Trust um, has got a new project lottery funded called Newsnet which any of you can register for yeah, and get lots of free online resources and templates around Facebook, Twitter, magazines, you know, running um, events and things like that. And our role in that as the first beacon hub, if you like, of citizens journalism is the fact that it's our community news cafe. So a lot of people who have got better blogs than us, better magazines than us, better radio stations than us, have all turned around and gone, actually, what we all struggle with when we're doing this is how do we get people to interact with us once we've set it up? 
that's great, we've got it, but how do we get the community to use it? And there's a simplest thing, which is just getting everybody together for a community conversation. Um, so that's kind of what we've been designated as experts, I suppose. Um, the great thing about this week is it gives us an opportunity to come up and work with Jennifer and David at, at UWS. The great thing about it is we've got a big 2012 project that we're involved in with these guys, but we're linking it to the Commonwealth Games Media 2014. And that's much about what we're doing in Leicester, bringing young people up here to get involved in your Torch Relay project that Stan will talk to you about, Citizens Relay, I'm sure, and moving on to the Commonwealth Games, because we're great believers that we're closer to London than you guys, hmm. but we're just as far away, yeah, if you understand me, in, in mindset. You know, and um, you might be a rural community here, but we've got rural communities around Leicester, yeah? but some of us, as Sarah, some of the most rural, uh, sort of isolated people I deal with are actually in cities. You know what I mean? So you know, sometimes it, you're geographically isolated, and sometimes you can be completely isolated as well. And so it's about <laughs> sharing the similarities. Um, you know, it's about as much us learning from you as you learning from us. We're here as volunteers this week. You know what I mean? So we're, we're kind of here supporting these guys because we realise that we've got to go out and find out about things as well and, and see how you're doing it. And we were talking about your town hall project and maybe how we could support Jordan with the table tennis thing and linking it to stuff. And I think it's about linking projects to the Olympics or the Commonwealth Games and working out why you're doing it. I think I surprise a lot of people when I say um, someone in a suit and tie won the London 2012 Olympics in my name, how I choose to participate down to me. So I choose not to go to London, I choose to put on a big independent run media hub getting the word independent coming at me from a lot here, so over four years I've had no central core funding from the local authority for citizens art at all, kept it all independent, and now it's all funded by the fact that the police contract me to teach them Twitter, for example, based off all the work I did with protests around the English Defence League, and then we've got national contracts like Somewhere Too, part of the Cultural Olympiad, so all of that core stuff I do, we give away. For Citizens Eye for free. All our free workshops, taster sessions, Facebook in 40 minutes, Twitter in 20 minutes, give it all away and then people come back and start paying you. So um, I think it's really important that we looked at London 2012 and saw it as an opportunity because Leicester has this badge of community cohesion. Um, what is community cohesion? Well, in fact, when you break it all down, it's all the Olympic and Paralympic values it's determination, friendship, courage. That kind of stuff. So we kind of did that and then we've picked a different theme every month. We're putting on a series of different events. And I'm you know, pretty switched on by a documentary film. So what we do is I run a documentary film festival for all of the 20 volunteer-run news agencies I've got. So we put documentaries on about young people for the young people. The older person's news agency we have, seen your eye, we put on older person's documentaries. And we work with disabilities, ex-offenders, refugee and asylum seekers. And we find it's much better to bring people in around issues, yeah? and then we set up a mental health and wellbeing news agency, How Are You, based on the fact that we had people affected by mental health that were ex-offenders, refugees, asylum seekers, carers, um, young people. Okay? So again, I think it's looking at this venue as a, a bit of a hub, and what it's got going for it, what it provides you with, and I think it's the cafe, definitely, in, in a really good space the opportunity to bring people in and inter interact with them and ask them what they want. I think you've already got the printed version, which I think is great. You've already got someone who's um, using Twitter and Facebook, which in my mind makes you an expert because you're using it. You know what I mean? I know so many people that are fearful about even using it because it's like, well, if I go online, suddenly like, it's like inviting someone into my house and you know, to see that like, I walk around naked. Like, mm. Um, I think it, you've got to understand that all of the safeguards are there that you can use. So I think with things like you know the Business Association, an opportunity to link to something like the Commonwealth Games, and then it's reaching out to business people um, that are either existing or are setting up new, whether they're local people or people that are coming into the area. And if they're looking to develop um, a website, for example, like Fiona is, it's about saying to those people, look, you know, we've got a bit of expertise that we could swap that a one hour community news cafe about Twitter or Facebook or stuff like that. And it might be suddenly your face, your website, your new one, which was gonna be maybe very static or you're going to sell something, or I don't really know what you're gonna do, but these tend to be the questions you have. 
Well, suddenly, you, if you had a blog linked to that, and you had some turnover, you could be writing about the news cafe, and someone could turn up, and then you might sell them something. And I don't think ne necessarily business is a dirty thing. There's a lot of people I hang out with in community groups that mm. business people are either, if they don't fund something, if they're not a sponsor, then they're not interested. But, you know, we all go home and we all, after, after work, working for somewhere else, or we work for ourselves, and we need to kind of find some way of getting that to work together um, for the, sort of the benefit of communities. And that's what we've really tried and managed to do by doing sort of, you know, school magazine projects here, for example, this one here, community, and we worked with a couple of schools. And this came about trying to build two schools to get a bridge, because the perception was that if you wore this, you were this, and if you wore that, you were that. And, um, and so we've worked quite closely with um, different schools and different projects and stuff. And funding is a real key one, and I'll, ju I'll just finish on funding and then we'll take some questions. Funding is a really interesting one because a lot of people say, I want to do this, but I can't get the funding. And it's about trying to be creative in how you find that funding. For example, I'm launching a new newspaper at the end of this month, on the 27th of March, The Citizen's Eye, there you go, the magistrate name. Um, and people say to me, how can you possibly launch a newspaper now, a 12-page tabloid-sized newspaper? And it's about not necessarily going after advertising, it's about going after partners that can come in on the project with you who have marketing budgets that they have to spend to do things. Okay, so I'm not looking for Bert's bed knob and broomstick shop or you know uh, hairdressers or any of these kind of things. I, I'm looking for people that are working with young people, are working with older people, are cultural Olympiad projects, yeah, and turning around and say to them, look, you know. In your grant funding, yeah, or your core funding, you have to reach out to people and get it. Because a lot, a lot of grants now, they say, well, we'll give you the money, what are you going to do at the end of it? You know, people do this project, how are you going to tell others? It's actually, in, it's actually in the funding bid, isn't it? Dave's, Dave's nodding at the back. It's actually in the funding bid. You know what I mean? Where, where, how are people going to find out what you've just done with this grant? And if you can get that bit right, and you can be seen as a useful local resource because local people use what you do you know, look, look to your magazine for that information I think it's really key because if you guarantee that lots of people will look at your magazine and it's got an online presence, people like Fiona will turn around and go actually that's worth advertising in there because you're capturing it you know, I don't know what your relationship necessarily is with the mainstream media so I would say like you know, commercial radio stations or you know, the local newspaper that covers it, but the chances are, the way the industry is going, they're, they're shrinking, and they tend to focus on the things that find them, uh, which, because of the geographic area they cover, will never be things that will be of interest to you. And I said to you, I promised you a story about advertising. What we've done with the Media Trust is we've looked at a lot of hyper-local journalism, which is, tends to be like blogs or websites. Now, they still struggle with getting people to pay to advertise on them. Yeah? So what I'm actually pushing with Adam is we're advocating this thing that the people that are doing newspapers, yeah, through this fantastic online resource called the Newspaper Club, yeah, you can print any size newspaper you want, like tabloid size, number of pages, tells you exactly how much they're going to be if you want to sell them per copy. Yeah? Deadlines, Tuesday and the Thursday, two o'clock, send it off, three or four days later, the newspaper comes back, you can write around 300 and you can have 5,000. But what we're finding is that people like the Bedford Clagger, for example, run by Erica, what she's realising is that people will pay to advertise in a newspaper. It's just the amount they will pay. So if you're a small local newspaper, they'll pay £50 or £100 if you're doing 3,000 copies because they know people will read it. So what you're actually finding is a lot of hyper-local websites now, news sites, will actually start newspapers because people will pay to advertise them and they'll be able to subsidise their online hyperlope, which is actually their passion. So the irony of it is, we'll actually go back to having more newspapers than we've originally got now because the industry has gone like this and is now going like this. Whereas citizens' journalism is completely the opposite. Rather than this person telling all these people that's important, citizens' eyes turn the model on its head to so all of these people up here. This is the real world. Some of them have blog, 